Um, on this one, and remember the answer was 10 minus square root of 2 minus 50 comma 10 square root of 2. Um, so if you at least got to that point, you can give yourself an M. So in this case, we have to do cotangent. So there's three, two things that I want everybody to be able to do, no matter what. If you guys make mistakes from here on out, that's fine. But there's two things I want you guys to be able to take away from all of these problems. The first is determining the important points. Amplitude, period, that's not with a B. Your x scale, your phase shift, and your vertical translation. Now, just like the cosine or the sine, this has the exact same standard form. OK? So now let's go back and determine what our amplitude is. Now remember, only sine and cosine have an amplitude. Cosecant and, se and cosecant do, oh, I'm sorry, secant and cosecant do not have amplitudes. The amplitude is the distance from the highest to the lowest point. Cosecant and secant go infinitely positive and negative, so there is no amplitude. The same thing for cotangent and tangent. There is no amplitude. None. Only sine and cosine have an amplitude. That was a very common mistake on a lot of students' tests. The period. Remember, the period in this case is not 2 pi divided by b. It's just pi divided by b. So what we do is we take the coefficients of your variable, which is your b. In this case, we have pi, and pi is being divided by 2. So I'm going to have pi divided by pi divided by 2. Now I multiply by the reciprocal. And then what you guys can see is that goes to 1. Those cancel out. So I'm just left with a period of 2. Okay, So this is now going to have a period of 2, which is not going to have a pi in any x scale of anything of that sort. Now we go and take the x scale. Now the way that I taught it, which is a little bit different, um, rather than doing an x scale divided by 4, which is perfectly fine, you can do an x scale divided by 2. I prefer to do it by 2 for your sine and cosine because I didn't, I didn't make you guys determine all the points. So you just take your period divided by 2 for me. So I take 2 divided by 2, which equals 1. The next thing is to fake, take your phase shift. bx minus c equals 0, just like that. Take whatever's inside there, set equal to 0. So here I have pi x divided by 2 equals 0. When you guys again multiply by the reciprocal on both sides, what you guys get is x equals 0. So that's where I'm going to want to start. And the last case is the phase shift, which is your d, which in this case we do not have a phase shift, so it's none. Okay. Everybody should at least be able to determine that type of information. I know this was kind of hard for you guys because this is when we first really started getting into fractions in this class. But you need to be able to understand what each component of information does and then how to find it. The next extremely important information is we have to know what the parent graph of the cotangent looks like. That means, what does just cotangent of x look like without any transformations, without moving anything anywhere? So remember, the cotangent graph has a period of pi. At that period of pi, we have an asymptote. Then you have an intercept at pi halves, intercept at 3 pi halves. And the graph falls left, rises right. I'm sorry. No. no. It rises left, falls right. Ah, oh, what am I doing? That's solid. OK. So that's what the parent graph looks like without any transformations, without changing any of the rules. That is cotangent. <laughs> tangent falls left, rises right. It's been a couple months for me. I, got to, I had to think about it again. All right. So everybody should know that unless there's a reflection going on, your graph should look like that. right? We know the scale is going to be different and all that kind of stuff. But unless there's something crazy going on, everybody's graph should look something like this. right? And if you don't remember, like obviously you can use your graphing calculator to graph it right? and just check it out. So now let's go with the information that we know. 
our x scale is at 1. So that means every important point is going to be one, one unit away from each other. So the x scale is at 1. Our period is now at 2. Okay. So our period is at 2. Oh, I'm sorry. So first of all, before we get to we always start at our phase shift. Or we don't always have to, but it's very easy to start at phase shift. So we're going to start at 0. If you guys remember, at cotangent, where you st your starting point is also an asymptote. So I'll go an asymptote there. The next point is an x-intercept. The next intercept is our asymptote. Intercept, asymptote. There's no vertical translation up or down. There's no reflection. So now I can simply sketch my graph. OK, and that's it. So if you had yours scaled correctly, 